Hi, John DeWire here again, and uh, welcome to the WOW Manifesto Client Attraction Program, module number four. And hopefully you found the first three modules to be of uh, great benefit, and I think you're going to find the same with this. Uh, this is all about getting emotional. Uh, let me just bring the slide up on the screen so that I can tell you what module uh, four is. It's exactly that, getting emotional. Uh, I think I've been emotional maybe once or twice in my life uh, when my football team lost the grand final and uh, I'm not sure what the other occasion, I'm, I'm joking, okay. This has nothing to do with that sort of emotion, this has got to do with emotional direct response marketing. And what I want to highlight to you before we get into the components of emotional direct response marketing, because I'm going to give them to you here step by step, is the fact that we buy just about everything on emotion. And I know that it's an age-old theory that, you know, people buy their homes on emotion. So real estate agents rub their hands together when they see some facial uh, reactions from, you know, potential buyers. They think, well, we've got this one because, you know, the wife falls in love with the kitchen or the husband falls in love with the garage or whatever it may be. And yes, of course, uh, there's a lot of truth to that. I'm sure that most people buy a home on emotion. Might be a bit different with investment properties. I think they might put some metrics against that decision. But when you buy a home, yes, you fall in love with the block of land or the mountain range behind it or the kitchen or whatever it may be. It's not just real estate. It's just about everything that we buy in life, we buy on emotion. Logic comes second. So whether it's an ice cream or whether it's a sports jacket or whether it's a bicycle or a new car uh, or whether it's uh, exercise gym equipment, uh, it could be anything. It doesn't matter what, a chocolate bar, we buy it on emotion first and logic second. Sometimes logic doesn't even come second, okay? So therefore, wouldn't it make sense that as a business owner or business you know, chief executive that you should learn uh, the tactics of emotional direct response marketing. Because if you know how to speak to people and communicate your messages, messages in a way that would capture their emotion, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to get them as a strong prospect. And it's called emotional direct response marketing. And what I want to do now is take you through the steps in emotional direct marketing, okay? The first step is, uh, obviously use that tactic, but the first step is identify their problem. Okay, so whoever your prospect is, he or she, then identify what their problem is. Number two, you need to aggravate that problem. Number three, you need to provide them with the solution. Uh, number four, you need to provide proof. And number five, you have to have a call to action. So let's just go through that for a weight loss program. Let's say it's Jenny Craig weight loss program. Uh, if you were going to provide a problem, you would probably show a graphic of someone who was perhaps overweight and not feeling really good about themselves. So you might say together with that graphic, whether it's online or whether it's a TV commercial or whether it happens to be a magazine or newspaper advertisement, are you feeling a little overweight and not particularly healthy at the moment? And we can understand that if that's the case, you're probably feeling a little depressed, okay? Or a little bit anxious about that. And then number two, which is this one here, you'd aggravate the problem by saying, well, you know what? Summer is just around the corner. Don't you want to look good in that swimsuit? Number three, you would give the solution. Pretty simple, join the Jenny Craig weight loss program today and you know, there's a good chance you can lose X pounds or X kilos like so many other people in just four weeks. Number four, provide proof. And that's the before and after story. So therefore you would see someone who perhaps was overweight and not feeling really good uh, before they entered the dietary program and then four weeks or six or eight weeks later, guess what? They've lost all of this weight and they're really happy. So they're going to give you a fantastic before and after story. So that's all about providing proof. And number five, call to action. Well, just tell them to go to jennycraig.com or to ring a particular phone number. It's really, really simple when you know how. And if you're not using emotional direct response marketing to promote your products or services at the moment, then please start doing it. Um, the Greater Building Society, which I've mentioned in one or two of the previous modules. And the reason I do bring them up is because they were an ideal client. Pretty much whatever I said to them or recommended to them, they just did. I had a pretty good hit rate with them and so therefore they just said, tell us what to do, we'll put the money behind it. Uh, consequently, we were able to get Jerry Seinfeld to do their advertising uh, in you know, the last few years that I was involved with them. So therefore, they even went to that extent when I said, look, why don't we get a celebrity spokesperson who's down to earth, he's a family guy, he's just well you know, regarded by just about every demographic, let's get Jerry Seinfeld to be our spokesman. They said yes. Now Jerry charged a few dollars, but they just said yes. And so Jerry Seinfeld became the spokesman. But not before we had gone down the path of this, emotional direct response marketing. 
because you might recall if you've been, you know, sort of watching my other uh, webinars, uh, sorry, my other webinar, my other uh, videos with this program, uh, modules, uh, you might recall, I think in the last one, I mentioned the get a home loan, get a free holiday concept. And so therefore I told the building society, the greater, to get rid of its honeymoon rate, which was a 1% discount on home loans, and actually replace that with something that would be cost neutral. Just use that same amount of money that you would have discounted and put that into a free vacation. And when they did that, it just went nuts. And let me tell you how they did that. Now you can actually go into the blueprint, okay, and have a look at all of this. If you go back to the how to create a wow factor blueprint, you'll see the greater building society case study in there. But effectively what we did is that we came on TV and we came online and various other communications and said, if you've got a problem, if you've got your home loan with one of those nasty banks who charge you lots of fees. Now, the reason we could say that is because a building society and credit union, at least at that time, were not charging fees um, for you know, just about every single transaction at the bank. So therefore, this building society was very different from the big banks in Australia because they weren't charging fees. So what do you think I'm going to zero in on? that problem. So therefore the advertisements, let's just say the TV advertisement, it would have a pretty unhappy couple with a dinner table, maybe you've got the laptop in front of them looking at their bank fees, and we would say, have you got your home loan with the bank and you're sick and tired of paying all those fees? And guess what? The bank treats you like a number, they don't even know your name, they don't care about you. Have they ever, ever given you any bonuses? Well, of course the answer is no, they've done none of that. Well, guess what? That's not going to change. So we aggravated the problem by saying banks have got shareholders and those shareholders are demanding profits. Now, I'm not saying that we went through it specifically like this, otherwise we would bore people you know, to death, but this was the inference that we put in every ad. So guess what? We're going to aggravate that problem about fees and charges. They ain't going to stop because the banks have got shareholders who demand profits. Whereas at the building society, it's a mutual, whereby it's for the people by the people. Okay, we don't charge any of those things because we give back to our members. Number three, swap your home loan to the greater. So get away from those nasty banks. We can make it really easy. Just fill in one or two forms, okay? Swap your home loan to the greater and you're off to Hawaii or Tahiti or Fiji for a free holiday on us. What have you got to think about? You get better service. We know your name. We treat you really, really fairly. We don't charge any of those fees. And guess what? You're going to go to Hawaii. Do you think anyone could say no? If they were pissed off with their bank, if they've just got some bad service from the bank and they're recognising when we go through all this that they've got some big problems, why would they not swap? Well, exactly, that's what happened. Because if we put these ads on television of a night time, the next morning at nine o'clock, the switchboard was jammed with people saying, I'm pissed off with my bank, I want to swap to the Greater Building Society. It's so easy when you know how. Now, number four, you provide proof. And that would be Mr. and Mrs. Smith looking down the barrel of the camera going, you know what? You know, um, Gloria and myself, we used to have our home loan with one of those nasty banks that charged us fees and they didn't know our name and we never got anything from them. We swapped to the greater. Not only do we not charge, pay fees, they treat us much better. They know our names. We've got a very friendly manager and we went to Hawaii for free. Like, it's just an endorsement from heaven. And then, of course, call to action. Well, the call to action is go to greater.com, okay, or ring 131386. It was instantaneous. The moment that we put that on the television screen or we bought you know, spaces on the appropriate online portals, the switchboard just lit up absolutely instant. And that's the great thing about emotional direct response advertising. If you get it right, then the response that you will get will be instant. It's not one of those things where I'll build the brand and maybe over five or six or seven years, people will get to know you. No, no, no. no. I'm guessing you probably don't have the budget to sustain that sort of thinking. What you want to do is put this sort of stuff into your marketing real quick and get a result tomorrow. I know that's what you want to do. Now, let me just go through some other points here, uh, bring them up on the screen. Uh, always build your campaigns around the problem solution formula. So if you're thinking about any online advertising, whether it's pay-per-click with Facebook or Instagram or any magazine or TV or radio or letterbox brochure or direct mail, whatever it may be in terms of your communication, make sure you start with a problem solution formula. So if I actually go through those five components of emotional direct response marketing again, find the problem, okay, or highlight the problem. Number two, aggravate the problem. Number three, provide the solution. Number four, provide proof, which is normally a case study or testimonial. And number five, call to action. Really, if you, you were to take out the main message from all of that, it's problem stroke solution. It's a problem solution formula, okay? I'm overweight, I wanna be thin, okay? I, um, 
and not earning enough money and so therefore I want to join your financial planning program so I can earn more money. Okay, uh, it may well be that I'm not good at tennis and yet I want to be a great tennis player, that's my problem, so therefore I'll join your tennis coaching program. In my instance, the reason I'm guessing that you're here watching this module is because you either own a business or you might be thinking about starting up a business, you're working for someone at the moment, you want to start up a business, or you're in an established business, either running it or owning it, and your sales are flatlined. And you're here because you want, to, you, want to learn, you want to learn this stuff. You want to learn how to quickly make sales and how to quickly get customers. And so that's why you're here. I've, when I've you know, sort of convinced you to buy into this program, um, you might recall that I highlighted to you that I knew what your problem was. Your problem was you didn't have enough customers. You didn't have enough clients. So join this program and I'll show you how to do that. And I think you'd have to agree that I'm doing that right now. And hopefully I've done that in the first... A few modules. So therefore, it's all about making sure that you design your marketing around the problem solution scenario. Always highlight the benefits, not the features. There's so many people that get caught up on telling you all the features of that particular product, when in fact, we don't much care about the features, we care about the benefits. And the best example I give whenever I'm explaining this to anyone is the headache tablets. Over the years, I'm sure, you know, depending upon what age you are, you've probably had the odd Nurofen, or if you're in Australia, the odd Panadol, we call it. And um, I think that in the old days, um, they got it wrong because they used to come on television in the old days and the box would come forward onto the TV screen and it would say, do you have a headache? And uh, well, if you do, then why don't you get Nurofen? Because guess what? We've got codeine in it. We've got paracetamol. We've got this, that and the other. We don't care. I want my headache gone in 10 minutes. Tell me the benefit, not the features. And I'm not saying that there, are, there aren't some people out there that want to know the ingredients, but really by far the majority of people just want the benefits. So therefore you'll see these days the Neurofan TV ad will come on and it will say, if you've got a headache and it'll show a school teacher with a whole bunch of rowdy kids and she's up the front of the classroom with a headache and all of a sudden you'll see that she's not looking too healthy. She pulls a drawer out, gets a packet of Neurofan, puts two tablets in her mouth, glass of water, before you know it, the little clock on the corner of the TV screen goes tick, 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 tick. Ten minutes later, she's got blush and lippy. She looks so much more attractive and she's alive. The headache's gone. And guess what? As the camera pans out onto the little rat bag kids that were playing all over the classroom a moment ago and giving her the headache, they're all well behaved sitting at the desk. <laughs> it's amazing what headache tablets do just even for children who never took the tablet. So the whole idea is problem, solution. So, uh, sorry, sorry, benefits. So they're showing you the benefits, not the features. The fact that it's got codeine or paracetamol in it, yeah, you might eventually want to know that, but in the beginning, you want to know how quickly can you get rid of your headache. Now, the other point I want to bring up here is storytelling and testimonials. You know, you know direct response marketing is all about storytelling. It's all about going through those challenges and those problems that someone might have and then explaining to them that your mattress for the bed is going to get rid of their back pain. It's going to make sure that they don't wake up with a sore neck, a sore neck sorry. Uh, or the pillows that you might be marketing do likewise. Or if it's an exercise bike, it's going to take you know, X amount of pounds or kilos off their weight and so on and so forth. So the whole idea is you need to story tell and you, know, you need to also bring in testimonials. You see, people uh, expect you to say nice things about your products or service. And if it's not you personally, it's you know, your advertising, your marketing messages. They expect that you're going to say that that's the best car or that's the best lawnmower or you know, that's the best mattress or whatever it may be. Um, what they don't expect to see is um, testimonials from previous customers of yours raving about your products or services. Now, the mistake that most people make when they go out with their iPhone and get the video testimonial is that they let people just ramble and there's a special way to get video testimonials. I'm just looking at my notes here. I think it may very well be around about uh, module seven that I'll be showing you exactly what to ask when it comes to video testimonials. So yeah, look forward to that. But you want people to, on the video testimonial, give you stuff that you can use, give you stuff that you can put out into social media or you can feature on the homepage of your website. So in my instance, it would be, oh, look, I joined JD's you know, marketing program and you know, before I joined his program, my turnover was $512,000. After joining his program and learning this direct marketing stuff with the wow factor pixie dust on it, I've gone in just 12 months from a turn annual turnover of $512,000 to $950,000. It's been the best investment I've ever made. So therefore, they've given you a story about their problem and their situation before they came into my world, and then they've given you the results. By the way, I've got plenty of those, so if I 
just throw in a little boastful um, sort of uh, show-off bit there. Uh, but the thing is, is that you need to storytell and you need to use testimonials, preferably video testimonials. You see, written testimonials, people are a little sceptical. They think you might have just written it out and put Bill and Jenny's name at the bottom of it. But you can't fake a video testimonial. Well, you can, but I mean, you know, if you've got enough of them, it's very unlikely that you... Well, let's put it this way. It's harder for you to fake a video testimonial uh, from your brother-in-law or your sister than it is to do that in writing. It's really easy to put anything in writing yourself and just put someone else's name to it. So look, when you're doing testimonials, do video testimonials. And as I said, module seven will show you exactly what questions to ask and how you get the best testimonials. But when you get good ones, guess what? Don't hide them on your testimonial subpage on your website. Put the best two or three or four up on your home page. Not necessarily on a saying at the very top of the page, because we'll talk about website structure and all that next uh, in one of my next modules. But make sure that maybe towards the lower end of your home page, you've got two or you've got two or three or four really strong video testimonials. Now, before I go, just well, one more thing I want to highlight here is uh, emotional copy to create theatre and drama. Okay, so there's number five here, um, emotional copy. You'll see in the blueprint, the, the written blueprint that you can download with this particular module. I give you a whole bunch of examples of headlines and, and copywriting. Um, but also here, what you want to do is create theatre and drama. Yeah, you know, put your Walt Disney hat on or your Steven Spielberg hat on. And I know you're sitting there going, well, thank you, JD. I am not Walt Disney or Steven Spielberg or George Lucas, but you know what I mean. Try and make your copy as theatrical and as dramatic as you possibly can. And you'll see in my blueprint that you can download with this module how to do that. Uh, so I won't, you know, sort of waste your time here with that. But create urgency. Now, that's really, really important. With direct response marketing, one of the big, 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 big drivers of getting response quickly is to actually have either a scarcity tactic or time-sensitive tactic. So therefore, you would say, well, look, you know, this particular widget is available with this bonus up until just Friday at five o'clock. And if you miss that, well, it won't be coming back again in the near future. So therefore they've got a time sensitivity to react to your offer. Or it may well be that you have a quantity um, uh, sensitivity issue. So therefore you'd say, look, we've only got a hundred of these. Once they're gone, they're gone. We've been able to get them in from China. And the, the fact is that we can only get a hundred. And so once they're gone, they're gone. So think about, you know, basically creating urgency through either time sensitivity or through limited quantities. Uh, that's about it. So therefore, hopefully you've enjoyed this Get Emotional uh, module. Again, please download the, uh, the written blueprint and uh, make sure that you grab all of the case studies and the extra information on that. Uh, let me just see what our next module is. Oh, very, very good. I've just looked at my notes and it is uh, all about fixing your website. Now, we've called it uh, Be Outrageously Different Online, but that was when I was in a good mood. <laughs> okay, normally I'm a bit cheeky, sarcastic and go out of my way to hurt your feelings. Uh, and I'll do that right now so that I can beef up the, you know how at the end of an episode of a TV show they go, coming up next week, well, coming up next week, I'm gonna be very critical of your website. Okay, I'm saying that the next module is be outrageously different online, but essentially uh, that's a nice way of saying fix your awful website. And the reason I say that is because in the experience I've had with businesses, all sorts and si all sorts of businesses and all sorts of sizes, from a few hundred thousand dollar turnover up to 40, 50, 100 million dollars worth of turnover, guess what? 90% of them have an absolute disgusting, awful, ugly website. Imagine the amount of money they could make. I mean, it blows my mind if they just fixed their website. And part of the reason that they didn't have a good website is because they went to a website designer. And you're sitting there going, well, isn't that what you do? If I want to fix my car, I go to a car mechanic. No. A website designer is probably a good graphic artist and he or she might give you a pretty website, but whether that website actually converts is another thing. And most of the websites that I've seen from all sorts of businesses have an absolute disgusting, awful homepage where it may look pretty, but it will never sell anything. And they've created what I call an information-based website, not a sales-driven website. You want a website that's a 24-7 sales manager for you, not one that just pumps out information. And there's a whole bunch of content that you need on your homepage, which of course is your most important page of your website. That's the one that keeps them sticky or not. It either makes or breaks your website as the homepage. You need a whole bunch of stuff on there to keep them there. So really, really, you should make sure that you don't miss this next module. And it's all about fixing a website. So look forward to seeing you in the next module. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one.